on today's motor house, which is the most reliable Land Rover? And does such a thing even exist? We have all of these. Did Some of them even work. And welcome back to Motor House. It's so good to have you back with us after what's been quite a bit of a time off. It's a bit. It's a whole new year. 2024, we've been away for quite a while now. I've had some health reasons. I've had to take some time off due to poor health for the past six months. It's really, really been hitting me hard. So I'm sorry we've been away for so long, but thankfully, I think I'm back on the mend, which is more than can be said for our fleet of cars. Today's topic of discussion is are Land Rovers reliable? Which one is the most reliable? And that's kind of a sore issue for us at the minute since everything we ev own ev has been extremely broken of all, late. All the cars and yeah, we do mean all, all of them. them. It's another reason we've been away because everything's been broken and we've just... It takes time to film. Film cars. Fix film cars, cars fix, fix cars. cars. Film yeah. cars, fix cars. Ah. So it's just been automotive yeah. apocalypse. It's a good word. Automotive <laughs> apocalypse for the last six months. But hey, look, we're back. So um, what's happening with your fleet of broken child ratchet? Well, where should we start? <laughs> uh, let's go with uh, Mia, my MX-5, who I took off the road two and a bit years ago to do that, uh, that rotary swap, which mm -hmm. I have not managed to start because I've been too busy fixing everything that's broken. Uh -huh. You'll um, see a theme here. My Jeep is currently quite broken, but on the mend since I took it off the road uh, after noticing that one of the front axle seals was leaking, which is not great when you want to go off road because then that just means water's going to get in and that's very bad. So, so necessary hardcore maintenance. Yeah, hardcore really. maintenance. <laughs> what about the Hondas? How's it going with the Hondas? Which, as I mean, we all know, are meant to be one of the most reliable vehicles. See, I'd like to be all smug and be like, oh, your British chod is all broken and my reliable Hondas, yeah, they're all broken. Uh, my CRX Rexy, um, spectacularly broke uh, back in April of 2023 after doing the track day at Castle Coombe where she was great. Uh -huh. um, however, on uh, the way back to our, our hotel, the uh, gearbox decided to lock up while I was doing 60 miles an hour, <sighs> causing me to do a 25 foot skid to a stop with no brake lights. So I replaced the gearbox which was fantastic. However, then developed loads of weird electrical faults and I kind of just went, you know what? Cannot be bothered. So I shelved my CRX for the entire of last summer. So yeah. next up has been, well, so far, far been bestest car. Bestest car. Little Danny Jazz. Little Danny Jazz. I love little Danny Jazz. Danny 45 Jazz. 45 miles per gallon, Danny has been Jazz. Faultlessly reliable. Oh, just so wonderful and always makes me so happy. They've been fun and wonderful and reliable right up until just before Christmas. I was cruising Danny M1 and suddenly, bang! Uh, the windscreen completely just shattered. I can only imagine from some kind of a rock or a stone or something flicking up. Strangely enough, a little bit difficult finding a windscreen for a car that they sold 600 of in the UK, isn't it? I knew that. We've currently got, yeah. how long's the waiting list for a replacement windscreen? <laughs> three to four months. Three months. to four months. Yeah, three to four months. So the yeah. most reliable, fun, useful car that we've had between us is now off the road because of a broken windscreen. All, all of my broken cars. How about you? How about all of my <laughs> broken cars? The very last video we put up was my TVR. Yes. Now, the TVR's been deliberately laid up for a couple of years. I mean, to be fair, it's a TVR. It is a TVR, they do uh... that. Um, you'll know from the last video we posted up, we were investigating sorting out a replacement engine for the TVR. We have got a replacement engine donor lined up. You're welcome. Which I was really <laughs> hoping to do over Christmas. Um, however, with everything that's been going off, that hasn't happened. I have had to permanently donate back to Ratchet, yes. Hans, the SLK, which yes. so far, Hans yes. has been so deathly, far. deathly reliable. Unfortunately, I can't say the same for my Porsche 911, which has been laid up now since last year with suspected timing chain guide failure. It's not looking good. It came down to me 
Hence the topic of today's video, having to rely on a 34-year-old Land Rover, uh, this 34-year-old Land Rover, as my main daily driver. It's not gone well. So that leads us neatly on to the main subject today. What is the most reliable Land Rover? We are a big green oval family here. I've grown up with them and it gripes a bit when all I hear all the time is, oh my God, Land Rovers, they're so unreliable. There is an element of truth in it, but what I'm gonna try and hopefully show you today is that, well, it's not exactly as a lot of people make out. This is the Icon, the original Range Rover classic. Um, an absolutely beautiful vehicle. This one's Dad's. Um, Dad has owned Range Rovers just about my entire life. <laughs> He's had a Range Rover followed by another Range Rover followed by another Range Rover. This one has led a bit of a pampered, cherished life. This one's lived in Japan most of its life. A really lovely example of a 3.9 litre Vogue SE. We'll have a chat with Dad later about his experiences of classic Range Rovers. And then from one extreme to the other, um, we have at the end probably the most unloved Land Rover product, the Freelander, the original Freelander 1. Land Rover's attempt to break into the soft roader lifestyle market, if you will. This one belongs to my sister, an early 2000s-ish diesel with the BMW TD4 engine in. <coughs> Laura, my 110 V8 high cap, and this is Rex, this is our factory 90 V8 County station wagon, which has been in the family 31 years we've had Rex here. Um, we're currently in the process of recommissioning Rex to get him back on the road. And then Laura, my 110 V8 here, which has changed a bit since you saw it on the channel last. What we did over summer, upgraded this from the three and a half litre V8 that we transplanted three years ago or thereabouts to a 4.6 litre V8 uh, that was plucked from a P38 Range Rover, which we converted to carburetors distributor, backdated it so it's all nice and traditional. We will have a video on that process coming soon. So then, let's talk about the original style Land Rover, the one that people sometimes call Defenders. I've been driving traditional Land Rovers on and off for 25 years, I guess. A good like that. while. A good while, we'll go with a good while. <laughs> I've found them to be pretty reliable, up until the last few days, uh, where yet another of our vehicles has decided to let me down. So I was all set for doing this and going, this is the one you want. They are the most reliable by far. But uh, about three days ago in Sheffield, uh, I broke down in rush hour traffic. Times I've broken down in the Land Rover and been stuck at the side of the road. I mean, how many Land Rovers have you personally had? Me personally? Yeah. OK, well, and, I mean... And the times that you've broken down. <laughs> Rex is a family Land Rover, so I, I drove this to college. Um, so... As um, you do. I, yeah, I know, <laughs> right? Um, so Rex has never, ever let me down. I can honestly say that. I've never, ever once broken down in Rex at the side of the road. Then I've had a 90 200 TDI County station wagon. That was utterly faultless. Um, sadly, written off by a drunk driver in Camden in the early hours of the morning. And then after that, I had a year 2000 110 TD5, which was a... <laughs> Fabulous car. Um, now, I really, really relied on that vehicle because it was the time when I was gigging heavily and I just needed something reliable to get me to gigs on time. I must have put 60, 70,000 miles on that Land Rover. Blimey. And probably sold it with, I think when I sold it, it had about 120, 130,000 miles on it. So how much did that break down? Once in seven years. That's not bad going, and what was the fault? Uh, it was a seized wheel bearing. Well, fair. Oddly enough, it was a seized wheel bearing, and honestly, if I'd have had <clears throat> the experience and maturity I've got now, I'd have recognised the squeaking sound <laughs> earlier in the day <laughs> and gone, maybe I ought to just have a feel of the right. hub here and see what's going on. Bit hot. Bit hot. Right. So, yeah, that okay. was a seized wheel bearing involved the, the big orange taxi. And then I had a Series 3 
XMOD ah. 109. Which is the one you pulled out of the hedge or something. That's right, yeah. So that was pulled... I, I, I listened. Yeah, yeah, she listened. <laughs> yeah, so that was an XMOD 109 Land Rover Series 3 two and a quarter petrol that we dragged out of an orchard where it had been abandoned for, I think, seven or eight years. Blimey. And managed to get that to fire up there on the spot. Barn find. Barn find. It totally <laughs> was. Or hedge find or orchard find. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now, I never broke down at the side of the road to the point of needing recovery. Mm -hmm. I had to be towed back by a friend because, once again, ignition problems. Um, really poor quality reproduction parts. It was the contact breaker points had failed. Right. So I fixed that by fitting electronic ignition to it and it never gave me any problems since at all. I've had two breakdowns in Lara in the last four months, something like that. Yeah. Faulty ignition coil, faulty ignition leads. Now, at which point I can hear all the diesel balls going, you wouldn't have those problems. Rex has never had those problems. And unfortunately, this <clears throat> I put down to something that plagues all classic car owners at the moment really bad quality reproduction parts. Yep, I think it's been this way for, for a number of years now. Um, oh, Hawk. I thought it was. Landy. It's a Landy. We are in Landy country here, so there's, there's one. Uh, just off shot, there was a there was a Land Rover towing a horse box up the road. We are in the part of the world for it. We are. As a Mitsubishi goes down the road towing a horse box. Excellent. I'm glad you got that in because <laughs> that was vital. You know, aftermarket distributors, uh, do they last as long as OEM Honda ones? In my experience, no. But then you always have to balance that off against, you know, a, a brand new Honda one is going to be five, six hundred quid. Yeah. A reproduction one is a hundred. Is 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 more expensive, better? I basically yeah. now have a choice with with some of the parts on these vehicles, which is it's either really unknown quality, super cheap stuff, and honestly, I don't mind paying twice that for something that works. But you don't have to spend twice that. You have to spend three or four times. Mm. These are all old vehicles now. And so they're all going to suffer old vehicle problems and the problems that are associated with classic cars, I think. Yeah, totally. Back, back in there. Back in there. You know, your other option would be, oh, I'll just go down to Scrappers and get a, a you yeah. know, OEM part off yeah. a used vehicle, but you just can't do that anymore. No, they don't exist anymore. Can't. In fact, actually trying to go down the scrapyard and find a car that even has a distributor well, on yeah. there. Traditional Land Rovers like this have always been high maintenance vehicles. Two axles, two gearboxes. <laughs> the service intervals were only maybe sort of four or 5,000 miles. So they are high maintenance vehicles, but from my experience, if you keep up with the maintenance and you look after them, Traditional Land Rovers like this are actually very, very reliable. I would happily take a traditional Land Rover like this overlanding anywhere in the world, provided it was well-maintained, well-serviced, and crucially, that I could actually rely on the quality of the parts that go into them. So that's my view on traditional Land Rovers. Let's, um, let's have a little look at the Freelander for a moment. Yeah. So let's talk about one of the most lamented Land Rover products, the original Freelander One. Um, even here in the UK, these are really, really unloved little cars. And I think that's a shame. I always felt these are a really good bit of design. Um, Land Rover kind of saw what was going on with cars like the original RAV4. Right, there's that people were after the elevated driving position and maybe four-wheel drive for winter, but didn't need something as hardcore as a Land Rover, you know. Um, <laughs> Ratchet's just mouthing it. What, what are you talking about, Ratchet? Honda HRV. Honda girl, time. Honda HRV, like absolutely. Late 90s, early noughties, you yeah. had the HRV, the CRV. Yep, all both of that. Soft rotors. Mum had one of these back in the day, back in the 90s. Um, that was the 1.8 petrol K series that people seem to absolutely loathe and despise. Um, that car never ever went wrong. It was absolutely faultless in period. Uh, Mum only sold it because she wanted to move back into an estate car again, but that was faultless. Um, 
This one, which has got a BMW diesel engine in, and everyone reckons is the most reliable one, um, my sister bought a few months ago. It has not been very reliable. <clears throat> See if we can get all of them. Hello. Hello, Clary. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. Right. Can I ask you some questions about your Freelander? Yes, go on then. Right. Has it been reliable? Mm, for its age, I think you can say yes. OK. That's kind. How many How many times has it failed to start? <laughs> About five. <laughs> About five, yeah. Has yeah. it Has it left you stranded at the side of the road anywhere? Yes. Yes. How many times? Once. Once. And what, what was it with it? Uh, that was when uh, some of the pipes, uh, water pipes, had perished and the radiator was leaking and the um, temperature went through the roof. Oh, crikey. OK, yeah. So what did you have, like, a load of steam from under the bonnet? Uh, no. I could smell burning and then the temperature gauge went flying off into the red, so I pulled over. Yeah, you, well, there you go. You see, you, 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 your father's daughter, you knew not to keep driving it at least, right? <laughs> no, um, and then I rang the AA. There you go, big yellow taxi, right? <laughs> yeah, or it might be in the RAC, one of them. One of the two, one of the two. How's how's it going now? Now we've had a bit of time to bottom some of the problems. How's? Yeah, it's absolutely fine now. Yeah. yeah. It does the job. It tows my caravan. It gets me from A to B, and it doesn't cost me any money. Well, and I think there you go. It's difficult to to say that when my previous cars were all Porsches. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, right, Do exactly. Do you enjoy driving it? Um, compared to what? My past cars, no. No. <laughs> um, but, no, so, again, do you think it's just maintenance, then, that it's needed? Because it was, this was stored for a long time, wasn't yeah. it, before you bought yeah, it? Yeah, I think it's just maintenance is needed, really. Yeah. Um, you know, it's had an upgraded radio because the one in it didn't work, and the... Uh, digital display is gone on the temperature get, uh, on the uh, clock. That interesting enough, in the summer, yeah, it reads again. Oh well, there you go. It's, <laughs> it's, it's that's some that's some broomy quality. That is bad. Yeah. <laughs> so. All um, right, Clary. Yeah. So, so once it's had the stuff done, it's reliable. But it, it's it, you've had teething problems with it, haven't you? Yeah, I have. Yeah. All right, Clary. Well, thanks but for chatting. But, yeah. you know, it's an older car, and you've got to expect that. Um, yeah. I think for what I need it for, it's perfect. It's it's a dog vehicle. It tows the caravan. I see my friend in Banbury and drive for two hours, and it's not too bad, so... You can't really argue with that, can you, really? No. Yeah. So, what we're talking about, Dad, is... What's the most reliable Land Rover? <laughs> right. The most reliable Land Rover is mine. And what's yours? The 90 V8 County Station Wagon. Ah, Rex, yes. Rex? Well, because I've never broken down in Rex. No. It's broken down once when uh, your sister was driving it down the motorway. She thought it was a rattle in the boot in the back, mm -hmm. but it actually the wheel bearing rear wheel bearing had gone so we had the spread of cars outside and i pointed out that you have had a lot of range rovers i have indeed so what was your first range rover the last of the three five classics yeah it'd be 87 88 yeah so on an f plate it was f plate three five efi how did you find that reliability wise well it was okay <laughs> i bought it with 30 about thirty five thousand miles on the clock and took it to 115 Wow, okay. But by the end, it was starting to get electrically unreliable. OK, so what sort of things? Uh, door locking systems. Uh -huh. uh, just, I, needed the, I needed the vehicle every day. Um, it was my works vehicle, really. Yeah. So 
company car. I just had to wave goodbye to it. Yeah, but you loved that, didn't you? I did. You? And we all loved that as a family, like that classic Range Rover. It was great. We had it a was... lot of family trips with it. It was just a Vogue. It wasn't an SE. Yeah, teddy bear trim in the holster. Teddy bear yeah. trim, but it did have air con. Yep. Manual seats. Yeah. But it was lovely. I enjoyed that vehicle. Yeah, I mean, fundamentally, did it ever break down on you and leave you stranded at the side of the road? No. No? No. So that was solid, and God, you used it for everything, didn't you? Turned everything. The caravan, family yeah. holidays. Yes, yeah. it was great. So then we went uh, into the P38 <laughs> years. So oh. let's firstly talk about the P38 Range Rover. So this was 90s Land Rover's attempt yeah. at replacing the much-loved long-running classic. Land Rover had an attempt at completely replacing it with the P38 Range Rover. Now, We've both got a soft spot for the P38, haven't the, we? The P38, in my opinion, the interior of it was as good as you could possibly get. Any plastics were what they were. They weren't painted or coated. It was this coated. nice soft touch. Yeah, lovely interior. stuff it was. Yeah. And the front seats were Recaro. Yeah, they, it was... Uh, and I borrowed that Range Rover for a bit, and I, I loved it. However... What was bad about the P38, Dad, Ooh, other than everything Everything. Else? <laughs> well, uh, it came with a warranty. I bought it with 2,500 miles on the clock. Yeah. I renewed the warranty, extended the warranty and extended it and extended it at every opportunity. Uh -huh. It cost Land Rover a lot of money. I was going to say, do you think Land Rover ever made a penny of profit on that Range Rover? <laughs> well, head gaskets. So, right, head gaskets. There's going to be loads of people, especially from America, yeah. with Rover V8s who are going to go, oh, you'll need to have head gaskets. We've done all right for head gaskets, generally, haven't we? Just before Christmas, we had to do the head gaskets on the 4.6 that's in yeah. my Land Rover. Yeah. And you had to have a set done on your Range Rover, didn't you? I did, yep. So that was at about 30,000 miles. Yeah, got shot that early. Yeah, that it early. was. And of course, those engines also have this notorious liner slip issue. Yeah. Which mm. hopefully I haven't encountered yet, but engines, Rover V8s, we think generally reliable. The late ones can be troublesome. Electrically, it was big. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah, I... let's let's talk about the immobiliser system, Dad. This oh. is a classic with P38s. They have this thing called the body control module, right? Yeah. When you went on journeys, how many keys did you take? Oh, with you? Uh, the, the whole set. The, all of them. All of them. All of them. Because they go out of sync yeah. uh, so easily. Yeah. 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 And, and the guy I sold that to, that P38 in the end, he parked it in... Um, the multi-storey car park in Mansfield, yeah. and he couldn't get in it. Oh, really? It, it was a, a mobile phone mast was uh, no, swamping really? it, yes. What about the heating and ventilation system? Ah, <laughs> everything was changed. Everything. Every, really, everything. Yeah, condenser, evaporator, Yikes. pump. All, uh, just everything. Recently, oh, and the control panel at the front. Oh, the whole control yeah. panel. I recently looked at used P38, thinking about buying one. The diesels seem to have lived OK, those BMW diesels. Yeah, the engines. You didn't like the experience of God, them, did you? It was, it compared, <laughs> compared with a V8 petrol, it, it was... Very sluggish. However, the topic of the video is most reliable. Well, the P38 also suffered with axle leaks, the front axle. Oh, and of course we haven't spoken about the air suspension. Oh have yeah, we? forgotten about that. The as air well. suspension. Yeah, yeah. So it had a pump. Uh huh. Um, bags. Bags. Yeah. Everything. Everything. Now this is interesting because your Range Rover Classic, which we're going to come around to in a minute, that we took a picture of outside originally came with air suspension, didn't it? It did indeed. What's it on now? It's on steel springs. So let's just say, if you want a reliable one, don't have something on air suspension. Ooh. Don't, don't. Well, I had trouble with all of my Range Rovers that have got air suspension. I sold it with about 86 on the clock. OK, so 83,000 miles. Yeah. Year. And how many years did you have it? Well, I ordered a Sport after that. Yeah. And that was 2005. This is going to be an interesting one. We're now into what I'd call modern era Land Rover products. Yeah. So you had a Range Rover Sport. Yeah. And the only diesel you've ever had. Yeah. What a mistake. 
Go on then, why? Well, everybody was diesel mad. It was the height of diesel it fever, wasn't it? It was that diesel fever. People were telling me all of this and some of it must have sunk in. Mm-hmm. It would do this to the gallon, it would do that to the gallon. It didn't. Throttle response was non-existent. Oh, really? Well, it was a huge delay. Uh-huh. Pulling out onto a busy traffic island. Yeah. You took your life into your hands. Oh, that much, all the... It was really bad, that was. So, ownership experience you didn't enjoy as much. Reliability-wise, any problems? Yeah, uh, there were some problems. uh, EGR valve, that was done under warranty. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I didn't keep it long. Remember, I kept it three and a half years. I was having a look on Facebook Marketplace the other week, and it is littered with Discovery 3s with blown engines yeah, no. as, as breakers. I think if I'd have bought the V8, yeah. I'd have probably still been hanging on to it. Your next Range Rover, you had an L322. I did, you? yeah. And that was a beautiful, beautiful It was car, indeed. It? So L322, and you sought out a very specific spec for that, didn't you? What was it? A V8 petrol. V8 petrol, but you didn't go for the super. No, I was naturally aspirated. And it was the first year of the Jaguar-based V8. Not Correct. The BMW, it had got the Jaguar in. That's right. I yeah. remember now. Yeah. yeah. It's a 4.4 BMW V8 they launched. Yeah. Those have catalogued issues, don't they? They do. I think, what is it, valve stem? Oil Seals. Seals. Timing chains. I do believe they got an alternator that was cooled by the cooling system. Oh, my gosh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, water-cooled alternator. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, There were a lot of hidden hose issues Mm -hmm. as well with the BMW engine. All that kind of stuff. But you sought out the one that had the the Jaguar. Correct. Yeah. I remember that as being a glorious engine. It was wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. And was it six-speed ZF gearbox? Yeah, I think so, yeah. I don't... Ever remember you having drivetrain issues? Did you? Rear diff. Oh, but, yeah. yeah. And that was a BMW diff. Because it's the because the L three twenty two shares a lot of its platform architecture with the X five of the period, doesn't it? So but it had got water in it. the The oil had gone milky. Replacement second hand diff. Correct. And then what other issues? What else needed doing? I seem to remember, didn't we change the air suspension compressor? Compressor, yeah, there you go. The theme here, oh, it air had suspension. T- it had two new front struts as well. Right, new struts. So air suspension. I'm really not convinced that if you're looking no, for no, reliability, I'm not convinced on air suspension at all. But otherwise, that was a that was a pretty was good, solid yeah. vehicle, wasn't Enjoyed it? Enjoyed that. And then you retired and got nostalgic, didn't you, Dad? So. Tell us about your current Range Rover. Yeah, I picked up a, a very late hard dash classic, a 3.9 Vogue SE. So yours, I know you've put a lot of effort into getting it back up to spec, but you've used that on classic car tours and rallies, haven't you? I love it to bits. Any problems? Now you've now you've no, sorted no, it. Now I've bottomed it. Yeah. Yeah. It's just great, isn't it? Just... Full stop, most reliable Land Rover product. If you had to pick one that was going to be the least trouble, most reliable. I've got a hunch I know what you're going to say. Series 2, 2A. Two, two they a. were the best built Land Rover products ever. What were the first vehicles to ever go places in the world? A lot of those were Series 2 Land Rovers. Yeah, they were. Right. So, a Series 2, you ain't going to get there very quickly. No, nope. It's not going to nope. be comfortable. No. Nope. <laughs> it's not. If you, if you want to experience what a 40s car was like, yeah. at drive an old yeah. leaf-sprung Land Rover. A leaf-sprung Land Rover, but, yeah, a Series 2. Greg, who's been on the channel, he's got a beautiful Series yeah. 2A, and we've been off-roading with Greg in that, and it's never been a problem, has yeah. it? Yeah, and they galvanised a lot of the parts. Yeah. Body yeah. parts. They were, they were really high-quality machines. Yeah. Let's talk about Range Rovers. From your experience of Range Rovers... If he had to choose one that is most reliable. Most reliable Range Rover. That's a tall order. <laughs> Does such a thing exist, Dad? Yeah, an early classic Range Rover on carburettors. Yeah. Get rid of all the electronics. Yeah. Yeah, that one, that very reliable. Manual box. Yeah. Conventional manual transfer box. Yeah. V8 on SUs yep. with a distributor. And of course, coil springs. Correct. Conventional steel suspension, live axles. It's a mechanical basic. Well, thing. it's one of those that did the Darien Gap, remember? Ah, 
I very well remembered that. Yes. Now, so the only vehicle still yeah. that has ever managed the Dorian Gap is a classic Range Rover, Correct. isn't it? Do you remember the um, turbo diesel Range Rovers that they entered in endurance records? <coughs> yeah, that was the VM-powered one. The VM-powered one. one, which is a much maligned engine, but it set speed and endurance records it that did. held for, for decades. And it averaged over 100 miles an hour for 24 Isn't hours. It really? Yeah. Good grief. Well, wow. something like that anyway. Yeah, 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 quite amazing. And then also, the amount of times classic Range Rovers have won the Paris Dakar yeah, out. They did, I know they did. Yeah. And it's not just a fluke, was no. it? It was like a few years on the route. So I think we're going to go with that, aren't they? A really good contender of most reliable Land Rover product is a basic classic Range Rover with a bare minimum of electric. Correct. Absolute bare minimum. If you had one Land Rover product, uh, well, you've got it, haven't you, to last you the rest of your life? Yeah. I know, that's it. Your yeah. classic Range Rover. Yeah, and obviously my 90. And, and Rex, the 90 as well. So there's a theme developing here. Coil springs, bare minimum of electrics. Carburettors. Carburettors. <laughs> So by now, you're probably getting a bit of a picture, is that traditional Land Rovers, things that people associate with being Land Rovers, they're all old cars. And what do old cars need? A lot of maintenance. A lot of maintenance, <laughs> and at some point, any classic car, don't care what it is. Yeah, if you neglect it, it's gonna break. That's all there is to it. It's just gonna happen, yeah. isn't it? But what we do not have behind us is anything that's like been made by Land Rover in the last 20 years. At this point, all I can talk about is anecdotes that people in the trade, friends in the trade have told me. Right. And friends in the trade don't want to touch them with a barge pole. Oh, because of course, Land Rover in the last 15 or so years has gone a lot more lifestyle. Big time. Diehards like me mourned when the traditional Land Rover was killed off. Land Rover no longer make anything with beam axles, mm. manual <clears throat> transmission, you know, all the, all the chunky, rugged mechanical stuff. They've moved very much towards connected technology <clears throat> and advanced infotainment and whatever, and things that I'm not entirely sure fit with Land Rover's core values. However, now that's my point of view, but equally, there are people who really love the new Defender. Because you've had Land Rovers of all sorts, all ages for, for years, haven't you? So I have, yes. You yes, were I telling have. me you learned to drive in. I, I learned to drive on a Series 1. In a Series 1? Uh, um, the first vehicle I ever actually owned personally was a Series 2, yep. which my brother-in-law had retired from the farm. So you can imagine what a shed that was. I can well imagine, <laughs> absolutely. And of course, you still own a def uh, an old Defender 110, right? We do indeed, yes. TD5, yes, we have the right? T yeah. TD5, it's really, that is the workhorse of the, of the business. It, uh, it acts as the um, training vehicle for anybody who wants to have an introduction into driving yep. a 4x4. Yep. It will shortly be going to the cash and carry with my son Mark. <laughs> Excellent. As will this be going to the cash and carry yep. as well. So, yeah, it, it's, yes, it, it's a hard-working vehicle. We, we've owned that particular vehicle now for the last 12 years. So, uh, yes, it's a faithful friend. What do you like about this that you didn't like about the old one? Well, it's it's a it's a comfortable vehicle to be in, um, and you know, by any stretch of the imagination, you can't describe that factor yeah. into the old 110 that we have. No. She's no. not a comfortable vehicle. She's a workhorse. Absolutely. This, I suppose, has the best of both worlds. It can be a workhorse. <clears throat> it is incredibly capable off road. Yep. Um, but it is also a very nice place to sit and drive in the 21st century. Yeah, the interior so is wonderful. On it that, is. It? It's, it's you know, I mean, the, the guys at Solely Hull have done a superb job making the vehicle practical but comfortable. It's, it's moved on. It's, it's, a, it's a Land Rover of the 21st century, whereas our old 110, she's stuck in the 20th century, just about. One of the criticisms a lot of traditional Land Rover owners have placed against the new Defender is saying, it won't do what the old one will do. You, you know that that's not a workhorse. It's it's not a proper defender. Do you feel this fulfills all the roles of your old one? Will it do everything your traditional defender will do, it, or 
do they have their own niche? Well, it certainly does everything that the old Defender will do. As I just said a few moments ago, this will be going off to the cash and carry and it will be coming back in two or three hours' time loaded with about £3,000 worth of goods from the local cash and carry so that we can feed yep. our guests for the next week. Yep. Um, as will the 110. That will also be going down. Yep. Um, so, yes, it, it does fulfil the, um, the purpose of the old one, but... It, things have moved forward. Absolutely. And, um, it, it, it is a different vehicle. And if you gave me the choice of driving the two, if I was going for a day's green laning, I would take the 110. The now, that, 110. now that's interesting, isn't it? So why, why that? Because you've already said this is more comfortable. It'll go everywhere the old one will. It's a nicer place to be. So why, why would you take your old 110? Because it's more involving. Right then, girl. So as a Land Rover outsider <laughs> from the case I've put forward <laughs> yes. and the cases everyone else has put forward, <laughs> what's been your conclusions on what's the most reliable Land Rover? It would seem by a Defender from like the 80s or 90s, uh, probably dump what you've bought it for into it again in getting uh -huh. it up to scratch. Yeah. Learn a lot, <laughs> buy some decent tools, learn how to look after it, and then maintain it with decent quality stuff. And it'll keep going. I think you're absolutely right. I, I know. No, I think you're absolutely right with that, is that these kind of Land Rovers, and I'm going to include the classic Range Rover in that as well, because the chassis but and the underpinnings are largely the same. Same with the early <clears throat> discoveries as well. If you look after them, buy a good one, mm. maintain it within an inch of its life and buy the best quality parts you can it's as reliable I think as a 4x4 is going to get mm. and as reliable as an older 4x4 is going to get that's my view on it what's your personal experiences do you have a Land Rover product what do you drive what have your experiences been with it how are you getting on with it yeah. or maybe you want to make the case for something else like a jeep. Oh, let us know in the comments. Down, down there, down by there, where my down, feet are. Down there, and whilst you're down there, don't forget to like, share this video if you've enjoyed it, and... Yeah, yeah, and subscribe, duh. Duh. Because you want to see more me, and I guess more him. Yeah, maybe some of me. All right, everybody, thank you for joining us back again on Motorhouse. Yeah. We have missed you so much. It's great to be back in your homes, on your phones, in your world. From me, the Bob. And me, the Ratchet. It's goodbye from us and goodbye from another episode of Motorhouse. Motorhouse.